So thanks to everyone who uh, has liked and watched the, uh, the little video that I did on the Alfa Romeo uh, Quadrifoglio. So that's uh, well, a few days in, it's got a thousand views, plenty of thumbs up and, and likes. So uh, it gives me encouragement that maybe uh, we're heading in the right direction. Uh, people like the sort of content. So it gives me encouragement to continue on, do something, uh, do something else. Um, a chance to come clean really now. Um, besides being into cars, uh, classic cars and bikes and boats and all sorts of things, I've been a commercial airline pilot, um, a captain, while well, flying for the last sort of 30 years, um, flying um, turboprops, um, jets, currently flying the 320, the Airbus 320, all around Europe and Africa and the, uh, the Middle East. So um, that kind of puts my interest into um, everything um, aviation as well. Um, might include some of that, but particularly uh, this particular video. A uh, friend of mine, Simon Patel, is coming up to uh, Bister, where I'm not far from, and uh, he's going to fly in in his de Havilland uh, chipmunk. Uh, we get together um, as a crowd. Uh, uh, I was a, a pilot for uh, British Midlands, became BMI uh, for about 17 years before being integrated into uh, to big airways. Um, and uh, we get together uh, once a year. This has been going for about, I believe, 19 years. Um, a fly-in uh, where everyone uh, who's got light aircraft got a time off. Uh, we're doing it on a on a Wednesday, so we don't have to try and get weekends off. Uh, we all fly up to uh, various airfields. It's been at uh, Biddeford mostly, um, and we get together and catch up with uh, old friends, see people we haven't seen for for many years maybe, and just uh, have a bit of a laugh. Uh, they have some games with flower bombing, trying to hit a target from from an aircraft with a little half kilo of flour. Uh, they do spot landing competitions where you've got to touch your main gear down on a line on the airfield, little grass strip, um, and generally then we park up the airplanes and uh, we go and get uh, thoroughly drunk. So, so that's the uh, that's the plan for today. Simon's flying up um, a little bit uh, later on. Uh, we're going to then uh, head off to Biddeford. It, it should only be something like a, a 20 minute flight up the road. Um, my wife very kindly then is driving the car up probably um, just over an hour's drive, <laughs> maybe even longer uh, to meet us later on with the uh, with the dogs, etc. So I just thought I'd uh, give you a little bit about a, a background about, uh, about me. You know, I've got my car license, I've got my bike license, I've got my race license, um, I've got my flying license, um, I've got all sorts. So it, it kind of widens the scope that perhaps uh, the direction we might take the uh, the channel uh, a few of the pieces um, well it, it could it could go anywhere let's face it um, well even more reason to uh, notify and subscribe and whatever other good stuff they say on these uh, these channels and uh, you'll be uh, completely up to date and notified when something new and maybe different um, crops up but thanks for watching so far I'll let you get on with the video here and uh, well, just see what we uh, kind of commercial pilots get up to on our days off. All the best now. Hi guys, um, I'm Ed, welcome back to the channel. Uh, not a car today, but uh, something a little bit special. I, I know it's a chipmunk, but um, tell us a little bit more about it. So if you're wondering what um, airline pilots do in their spare time, <laughs> what we do to have fun, um, then this is kind of it. Once a year we meet up. Hi guys, um, I'm Ed, welcome back to the channel. Uh, not a car today, but uh, something a little bit special. Uh, we've got a de Havilland chipmunk. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Simon, uh, is in a syndicate. Um, a few people own this aircraft and he's just been lucky enough to uh, land up today. We're off on a, a bit of a trip to see a few friends with uh, like-minded ideas. Um, uh, it's a fly-in. 
uh, today, which essentially means that everyone gets their toys out and they, they meet up, do a bit of flying and then go and, uh, go and get drunk. So, uh, <laughs> so, so that's, the, that's the plan for today. But he's kindly invited me along uh, to go in the back seat um, and uh, go up to Biddeford where we're all uh, meeting. So we're in uh, Bister Heritage here at the moment. Apologies, there's another aircraft up behind us here, a motor glider started up. So uh, forgive me if it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, noisy. So I'm gonna have a chat with Simon. He'll tell us a little bit about the aircraft and uh, well, we'll go from there. Well, Simon, just um, assume I know nothing, which is probably fairly close to the truth. <laughs> so, so tell me, tell me about, uh, I, I know it's a chipmunk, but um, tell us a little bit more about it. De Havilland Chipmunk, designed by De Havilland Canada immediately post-war. During the war, they'd been building uh, mosquitoes and tiger moths for the war effort. Right. Uh, and suddenly, middle of August, uh, 1945, all of their work dried up, uh, they'd got nothing to do. And they realized that to survive, they needed an airplane to produce. And the, the Tiger Moth, the ubiquitous trainer of the uh, Commonwealth forces during the war, uh, was now an old airplane. You've got fast jets coming in, the, the Gladiator and the, not Gladiators, I want to talk about the Meteor and the, the Vampire were, right. were suddenly appearing. Um, and the old biplane, Tiger Moth, you know, designed, well, basically based on almost World War I designs, yeah. uh, weren't going to cut it anymore. And so De Havilland Canada decided to take it on themselves to produce a, a new, nearly all metal uh, trainer uh, to replace the aging Tiger Moth and came up with this, the Chipmunk. Um, the idea was they hoped that the Commonwealth would take it on, and indeed they did. The Air Force got involved very early on. Uh, a couple of early Canadian uh, prototypes were shipped over and evaluated, and the, uh, the Air Force decided to adopt it as their basic trainer as well. Okay. Uh, and so a lot were built in Canada, uh, but a lot more were built here in the UK. Although they weren't actually built by um, de Havilland, who didn't have the capacity. They were busy churning out vampire fighters and designing the new Comet jet airliner right. uh, and so production was actually farmed out to Avro up at uh, Chester in Belmont and this particular one was built in April 1952 uh, built for the Air Force and uh, it flew with a couple of Air Force units in the early 50s uh, but was actually retired very early on it only spent four years in Air Force service uh, before it was sold off at auction and it was bought by an outfit called Derby Aviation uh, and it sat in storage for another few years before it spent most of the 60s uh, flying for flying clubs around the East Midlands area. It was then bought in the early 70s by a chap called Bill Bonner. Uh, he was, uh, or still is, I think he's still around, and he's certainly his company is. Uh, it's a company called Bonner Engineering down in Shoreham. And they do engines. They build boat engines, race car engines, uh, all sorts. Um, and the first thing he did with this actually was take it racing. Um, in its normal configuration, he took it off to the King's Cup, which was a uh, very famous air race that ran for many, many years. Um, I don't think it's been contested for the last few years, but certainly from the, the 20s through to about four or five years ago, it was contested annually. Uh, and he actually won the King's Cup with this one back in 1973. So uh, that's right. a reasonable achievement. Yes. He then re-engined re it with a, uh, a three litre Ford aluminium V6 automotive engine. Um, the idea being that the, the gypsy engines in them are very expensive to run and maintain. Uh, and the Air Force had a lot of these airplanes and this was the early 70s. And even in the early 70s, the Air Force were concerned about the cost of maintenance of this engine. Right. And so Bill came up with this conversion to a, a Ford derived water cooled automotive engine. Uh, to re-engine the chipmunk fleet for the Air Force. Um, okay, his engineering background then trying to shine through and he was running a business probably. Yeah, but he, yeah, he, that was it. He, he, the, the Bonner Engineering was already yeah. an extant business. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this one displayed at Farnborough, the uh, SBAC show at Farnborough, which is the uh, the big trade show for, uh, well, SBAC is the Society of British Aircraft Companies. Um, not sure it really exists much anymore. We have one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Farnborough Air Display was 
and still is in many ways the big trade show and this yeah. one displayed there twice uh, in the 80s uh, with the new engine the Air Force never went for it in the end um, having said that they soldiered on with these uh, the chipmunk in general was in service from 52 till I think 96 the last air experience flights got rid of their chipmunks around about 96 yeah there'll be um, a lot of people out there who were air cadets back in the day and, and are very familiar with many these. many many pilots British pilots we all started our flying in these at 14 in the back of the airplane <laughs> what would you like to do today John aerobatics sir <laughs> oh, God. all right um, very good and then all the services do still have one or two uh, the Air Force keep two with the Battle of Britain Memorial flight uh, typhoon pilots from their Mac 2 jet fighters uh, when they volunteer to fly the Spitfires and Hurricanes, the first thing they will fly is actually a chipmunk and they do all of their initial training and also their continuation training flying through the winter when the expensive vintage fighters are in maintenance. Uh, they keep current by flying the two chipmunks. Right. Um, and they will learn to fly one of these and the very next airplane they fly is the Hurricane. Um, and then once they've got experience on the Hurricane, then they go on to the Spitfire. Right. Uh, so the Air Force maintained two of these on the books. Uh, the Navy have one in their historic flight and the Army have one in their historic flight. Uh, so yeah, they are still, they are still military aeroplanes, um, although not with much of a role anymore. Yeah. And of course, fully aerobatic as well. Yes, uh, in a in a Weapon. gentle, limited way. Um, yeah, this she is a sixty-nine-year-old aeroplane now. Uh, so, <laughs> you wouldn't, uh, you so, wouldn't drag your granny around Tesco's car park. <laughs> why not? Um, <laughs> You haven't met my granny. She was she was she was well up for that sort of stuff. Well was, uh, up for, yeah. If yeah. I did, I took my uh, my grandmother was one of my first ever victims when I when I learned to fly aerobatics back when I was eighteen. Uh, she was one of the very first people I took and, and flew arrows with. Very good. Um, That's where you get it from, then. Yes, possibly. <laughs> um, right, I shall pre-flight it. Yeah. There you go. Great shot of your arse. <laughs> you do wide angle. <laughs> so what sort of range do you have on it? What's what's the usable kind of distance? So about can... three hours flying. 100 knots still air, so... Yeah. I mean, what's that? Up to Manchester, you wouldn't yeah. want to. You know, it's 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 not a it's not a touring aeroplane. Uh, no. It was designed purely for ab initio flying training. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, the absolute uh, most basic flying training, teaching students how to take off, land, uh, yeah. deal with basic emergencies and basic navigation, and a few aerobatics because they're going to be military pilots and they need to know how to turn airplanes upside down. Yes, I suppose, and I suppose. Um, perfect for tail dragger experience as well. Um, no. So of course it comes from an age where tricycle undercarriage, which is the absolute norm now, was still a a, uh, a novelty. Um, it's all to do with propellers. So early aeroplanes had fixed propellers. Um, which meant they had to be quite large to cope with all sorts of speed regimes from low speed takeoff uh, through to high speed flight. And just before the war, people started developing variable pitch propellers. Uh, so the propeller can actually be twisted on demand by the pilot uh, to cope with a wider range of speeds. And that meant you could have a smaller propeller so you didn't have to have it sitting quite so high up in the air. Yes, the ground, uh, the clearance. Which then meant that you could put it onto tricycle undercarriage with a nose wheel and two main wheels and actually see much better where you were going when you were on the ground. Uh, but this still goes back to the 1940s when that was still quite new and very expensive. And it still is expensive. Um, and so tail dragger aeroplanes with a little wind at the front, it's simply like that to keep the propeller from digging into the dirt. Yeah, so there's always there's pros and cons for everything really. It's a, it's a balance, it's a trade-off. As you were saying, you know, good for, good for uh, tail wheel training. Yes, it is, because actually it's a very benign aeroplane, uh, yeah. tail wheel flight. 
um, the tiger moth that it replaced is much, much harder on the ground. Uh, much harder to steer, to see out of. Um, they don't have brakes. Uh, you know, the, tiger, the tiger moths, you, you are purely reliant on being on grass and the friction of the grass uh, to slow, not only to slow the airplane, but also to turn it. You know, you need, you need the friction of the grass. Oh yes, because you, you can't lock an inside wheel and swing it around, yes, no, yeah. No, no. You know, you've got to, you, you have to plan so much more carefully. Um, so you, uh, uh, switch it off because I'm going to swear. <laughs> <laughs> this does fit in. <laughs> but only in a, a specific jigsaw kind of way. Yeah, it is. It's one of those jobs. Very good. And that just gives so each, each of the four cylinders yeah, each, each cylinder is prime charge in it. Yeah. So it should fire nicely when we start it.
There we go. 18 minutes, um, and we're here. So if you're wondering what um, airline pilots do in their spare time, <laughs> <laughs> what we do to have fun um, then this is kind of it once a year we meet up uh, we're all um, ex uh, British Midlands or BMI whatever way you want to call it um, an airline that was amalgamated into British Airways uh, about 10 years ago now so people have access to all sorts of things they've got their toys um, and they like uh, getting out we all meet uh, once a year um, at various airfields, but mostly here at Biddeford, um, to uh, well, just to catch up, old, new, retired, um, uh, and it's nice to uh, it's nice to meet up with everyone. This is uh, little Dragon Rapide. It's a uh, it's a gorgeous thing, um, absolutely beautiful vintage aeroplanes. You just never know what you're going to see here, uh, one year to the next. So um, Simon here is just putting some fuel in the chipmunk uh, 179 or thereabouts <laughs> a liter so there you go just a little bit more expensive runs on 100 low lead um, that's what it is you get 95 97 run at the pumps but the airplanes like it just a little bit juicier so um, that's what it's going to do top it up and uh, hopefully that'll do it for the day get enough um, to head back later on so I've got to catch up with a few friends, drink a few beers. So here we go, just walking the flight line, little uh, super cab. A nice, very stable airplane to fly. And then we're on to the, uh, the bigger stuff. Look at the height of this thing, Boeing Stearman. Massive big uh, rotary engine. Um, I suppose the prop must be seven or eight feet. Beautiful bit of kit, really. Really, really well presented. And as if one wasn't enough, here's the second one. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? It's really lovely for everyone to get together and uh, just meet up, all friends. And uh, they're going to start their flower bombing competition. Uh, they get three flower bombs. They're not allowed to go below um, 100 feet. And uh, we've got to drop them into uh, into the paddling pool, which will be, uh, I don't know if you can see it, right in the distance there. It's got a little union flag on. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and that's what we'll do. We'll try and attempt to get in there, uh, try and keep it safe and all the rest of it. You know what? Uh, pilots like to be entertained. <laughs> we, get, we get bored easily otherwise. So, little Yak 18. Wow. Gorgeous thing. Gorgeous thing. Um, and then we come down. There's another uh, chippy in army colours. Lots of RVs, popular things, PA 28s, uh, Warriors. There's a little Joe Dell, I think. That's nice. Little Piper uh, Archer or. It's a Cherokee, Cherokee 140. There we go, and there's the, uh, there's the chipmunk that we flew down on um, earlier on. <laughs> if you're really special, you get to come in a gazelle. So Andrew, Andrew Foxley, he's, uh, he's brought the gazelle in to, uh, <laughs> to, to show off. So they're gonna go and do a little bit now. Uh, they, they, they send him off uh, to the far side of the airfield so he doesn't blow anything over <laughs> when he comes in to land. So another uh, little Cherokee, a 180 this time, uh, Cessna 172, and uh, something that I've uh, many hours in in the past. 
uh, University Air Squadron in Belfast, QS, Queen's University Air Squadron. There's the Bulldog T1, cracking little bit of kit, fully aerobatic, 200 horsepower, fuel injected engine. Um, it's, uh, it's side by side, a big dome canopy, so plenty to see, and uh, it just flies absolutely wonderfully. Um, yeah, loved it, early days, oh, it takes me back. Takes me back 30 years or uh, or thereabouts. Yeah, um, another uh, another Stearman there, uh, little Cessna, and uh, another Chippy there. So, but this is uh, this is just the machine for me. Um, Shona, who organises this, is lucky enough. She's another um, captain with us at, uh, at BA, and uh, she gets to fly this beautiful Dragon Rapide. Uh, she doesn't own it, um, which is probably um, it's a good thing to maintain a twin, a classic twin, but it's just a thing of beauty. One of the early, early passenger aeroplanes. I wish I could tell you more about it. But it's uh, it's just an absolute thing of beauty to have a dragon repeat. Let's have a little look. I'm sure she won't mind. We have a little look in there. There we go. <laughs> Imagine going on your holidays on this. Hey, it just smells gorgeous, just like old aeroplanes do. Um, she's a very, very lucky lady to be able to fly this. Vintage cars, vintage aeroplanes, it's, uh, it doesn't get much better than this. It really doesn't. So hopefully uh, we'll see Andrew trying his attempts at the, uh, the flower bombing. Uh, some more aeroplanes here, uh, some been wheeled out, some tucked away in the hangars. Um, this little pit down there, I've flown those in the past. Um, cracking little aerobatic airplane. I think if I was going to have my own aircraft, it would be a Christian Eagle or a, a Pitts, um, just for the sheer fun of it. So hopefully Andrew will get the gazelle up in the air and uh, we'll see how he gets on. <laughs> Nearing the end of the day, um, putting the aircraft to bed. Uh, we've had a fantastic day, uh, a bit of flower bombing, and uh, well, <laughs> a few of these, so not uh, necessarily together. Uh, but that's what it's about enjoying the aircraft, um, spending time with friends, and uh, catching up uh, with uh, people I haven't seen in uh, absolute years. So, really lovely to spend some uh, time with the guys. And uh, we'll uh, enjoy a bit of a barbecue and maybe uh, maybe a few more beers. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you again. All the best now. Bye bye.